Hey, good morning. No, you go go ahead and announce your voices in. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen from the attic at Big More Pie Studios, Chris Fisher. Thank you, Johnny Torres, and welcome to the Wake Dot Show. Share and like, share and like, share and like. Uh, Monday through Friday, seven to nine, and this is a a, a new show here in the Bay Area. Uh, is it a television show? Is it a radio show? Well, technically, it's neither. It is a Facebook Live streaming show. And uh, we do this Monday through Friday, 7 to 9. And so make sure you share and like. That is a huge for us. Let's get right to stuff you should know. A pipe bomb prematurely went off in an underground tunnel linking the Times Square subway station and the Port Authority bus terminal on Monday morning around 7.20. The suspect has been identified as an unmarried 27-year-old green card holder, Ikayed Ula. Ula came to the U.S. seven years ago from Bangladesh on a visa for people who have family in the U.S. He was the only one seriously injured in the blast. Two Lakewood High students arrested Monday now face felony weapons charges after the school was placed on lockdown following reports of a weapon on campus. The 16-year-old will be charged, or the 16-year-olds will be charged with possession of a weapon on school campus and aggravated assault. You know how they caught him? How they got him? Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, these morons. I, I'm telling you, I uh, so a friend of mine, a friend of ours, Kim Randall. Yeah, she she does uh, these talks where she'll go around to schools and talk to them about the dangers of social media and also how to protect your privacy and 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 teach them about really what they are doing because they don't understand. They don't know a life without Facebook. They don't know a life without Twitter and Snapchat. Like this, to them, has existed their entire lives right. for most of them, and they don't understand that. Anyone and everyone can see what they're posting. They think that because they have their account private or because the message goes away after 20 seconds, that they have some sort of privacy in these situations or that somehow this stuff magically vanishes. Um, and and this is this is a proof. And, and maybe it's good that they don't know any better because obviously, you know, it's, it's serving uh, useful in these kind of situations. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, the, uh, the, the next phase of all of this, you know, like, I don't know, in five years or 10 years as the, the kids that grew up on Facebook, you know, their parents posting adorable slash embarrassing, which will be in the future embarrassing. Sure. I think that, or I'm just gonna make a British. I think there's going to be a run on, uh, parent killings. I think, oh, I think, I know it sounds horrible. I think they're, uh, you know, cause the, you know, these kids that are growing up on Facebooks, you know, they're still, they're still adolescents. They're still not even 10 yet. Yeah. Um, but you know, as they hit, uh, say 15, so let's say in the next five years, I, I predict that we're going to start, you know, how, uh, you know, the different, you know, different trends in the news and you'll have, uh, you know, mass shootings or, uh, you know, teachers assaulting boys, you know, hot teachers assaulting boys. And, um, and I, so I, yeah, I'm predicting that here in the next uh, five to 10 years that all of a sudden there's going to be a run on parents going down as kids go. Yeah. You thought that was funny then. Uh, it's ruined my life now. Um, I take that back because it's not going to happen. And the reason being is because they've all grown up with it. It's not like they have something to gauge it against. No. So it's not like, mom, how could you put that, you know, for us? Be like, how could you put all that crap of your kids out on the Internet? Yeah, it's hilarious when he's in his little uh, Thundercats face and he's sitting on the toilet at th two or three years old. But when he starts to date at 13, 14, 15 yeah. and his older sister gets a hold of that picture and starts, you know, you know, or all those pictures and starts embarrassing him. Uh, you know, uh, I just, well, this the, is the whole world is going to be going through that at the same time. So yeah. I have a feeling they'll have their own, uh, you know, group. Well, this is what's going to be fascinating to me is the fact that I think unlike any other generation, this generation or the, the you know, this, yeah, pretty much this generation will have, more of their lives documented than any any before. Oh yeah. Um, and so I can tell you, I've probably in in the two years that my daughter's been with me, you know, I've probably shot hundreds of pictures, probably dozens, if not maybe even a, a hundred or so videos. Like she will have massive amounts of content of her upbringing. And she will have her life documented unlike any other. Now, what's interesting, I think, from a societal standpoint, 
is that, you know, as we grew up, we lost friends along the way, right? You know, like we lost touch with friends. Like, right. you know, I miraculously, and I and, and partially because of social media, I'm still in touch with people I've known since kindergarten. And so you got to figure, mul- multiply that, right, over a lifespan of 20 plus years or 30 plus years. And what that effect is going to have on people's lives, the fact that they will never truly detach themselves from the people they meet along the way. Yeah, you've, you're connected to the world. We're assimilating. Yeah. Becoming one. To, uh, let's see. Hillsborough County deputies say they used a secret investigative technology to track down a man who's accused of exposing himself to a child in 1993. Deputies say 60-year-old Winston Minor, who had been living in Polk County, successfully used a false identity when he was originally arrested. Um, for the crime in Sefner. A paraeducator in Bartow was arrested after police say she struck a disabled student in the face. It happened at Gene O'Dell Learning Center December 4th. The witness said that the seven-year-old student who is not seven, seven, who is nonverbal and intellectually disabled became upset and started to kick his feet towards Murphy, at which point she hit him in the face with an open hand. During the investigation, the witness said this was not the first incident of abuse involving Murphy. Then why is she still there? The Charlotte County Sheriff's Office is reporting that canine, their canine Edo has been found, unfortunately, dead in Northport. He was found less than a half a mile from his handler's home. Sarasota Animal Services completed a necropsy, and preliminary results show the internal injuries to Edo are consistent with being hit by a car. Very sad. Celebrity chef uh, Mario Batali has been accused of sexual harassment by four women accused of accusing the chef of inappropriate touching in a pattern of behavior that spans at least two decades. Three of the women. What's he running for? (laughs) Three of the women worked for Batali at one point in their career. It's too bad that the, you know, these other celebrities who aren't politicians aren't politicians, because if they were, they could just say this stuff is all political. Well, but either way, these guys are taking big hits to their careers, as they should. Um, but uh, are we really surprised about Batali? Uh, well, here's here's what sucks. Yesterday, you know, when we we saw the story, we're down in the office, and uh, I made a joke. I go, well, you know, I, I, I go, here. this shows my prejudice. Because just looking at the guy, I'm like, I, I, I wouldn't trust him with my daughter. Just looking <laughs> at the guy, I'm like, he, he looks like, uh, you know, I, I just, there's something about him. And I go, that's effed up. But it shows you how prejudice works for whatever reason. And in my head, I started going, because he reminds me of a guy that blah, 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 blah. But it just shows you how prejudice does work. Sure. It, but then Cords brought up, you know, the owner here of uh, Bake More Pies. He had brought up something which, you know, we'll, we'll get to after stuff you should know. And that is a story that came out in September about how AI was able to predict if somebody was straight or gay hmm. um, with one photo, was able to predict it like they ran, I don't remember, it was 100 or 1,000 photos, whatever it was, and the AI had to guess whether or not they were straight or gay. And it was right like 80% of the time with Holy one photo, cow. Uh, with one photo for men and like 60% of the time for women or something like that. But then when it had five photos to work from, it was accurate 90% of the time wow. for men and 80-something percent That's of the time freaky. for women. Yes. Uh, so I, sorry to hear about that. <laughs> so, well, the point being, the point being, um, do your that, parents know that maybe there is something <laughs> to, you know, that person just looks creepy. That person just looks something yeah. and to trust your instincts on sure. stuff like that. Absolutely. I mean, look, uh, my instinct has rarely failed me. Uh, typically if I, uh, find myself uncomfortable around somebody or, or I find myself not, just in, now, again, I'm a very outgoing guy, very friendly guy. You know, I'm very social. And if somebody kind of handsy, rubs me, you're a little handsy. <laughs> if somebody kind of rubs me the wrong way, speaking of handsy, um, <laughs> uh, I'm typically right about whether or not that person's actually a, 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 either a that person and I just won't hit it off, uh, or b that person's a complete jerk or douchebag or whatever. It is. And even if we're wrong in those situations, you should still trust your gut and just get yeah. out of that situation for the moment. Even for for whatever reason you were wrong, still I think it's it's you know it, it's better to err on the side of your paranoia. Sometimes, yeah, uh, keeps you safe. All right, um, celebrity chef. Da, da, da. All right, now Terry Richard, the ex-wife of uh, singer Eddie Fisher, no relation to Chris Fisher. 
claims Larry King groped her on two separate occasions while they were taking photos together. The 63-year-old says she was first groped by King in 2005 at a baseball award ceremony in Los Angeles. She claims he slid his hands down her backless dress, Richard said. Quote, it ended up with about three or four of his fingers in the crack of my ass, resting in the crack of my ass, adding it lasted for several seconds. He is denying the claims, and I saw a report, too, that he may sue over those claims. <laughs> and that is stuff you should know for today. Uh, make sure you like and share. Thank you so much for tuning into the Awake.show. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get uh, some more details uh, like concerning the... Oh, oh, also coming up at 8.30 because we have that Alabama race. I can't, I can't even believe I didn't put that in stuff you should know. And it's uh, the focal point of uh, national news today. Yeah, uh, it's, it's the story of the day. And uh, we're going to have uh, my good friend Rachel Hammers on, uh, Alabama radio personality of the year or something like that. But poll, uh, Polls are saying this isn't going to be close. They're saying this is not even going to be close. All right, so it's interesting, is, and I almost sent you this story last night. Right, yes, even Alabama, uh, one of the big Alabama newspapers, is saying that this is going to be a Roy Moore lock. Right. right. It's going to walk away What's with it. What's interesting is, is that Fox News is, ha, showed a poll even as early as, uh, or as late as yesterday saying that Moore is actually under by 10 points. Or eight points. I saw that story too. They had all the polls up there, and you're right. I did. There was that. So now the interesting theory is uh, that Fox News may be trying to rally the conservative base to turn out if they think that he might lose. Huh. Uh, which you know, I don't know. I don't know if that would work, but uh, nonetheless, it's weird because kind of like our presidential election, we're showing polls that. Uh, show that he might lose there are polls that show he might win and uh you know we'll we'll see what happens uh, later today yeah and in the end these uh these polls don't matter it's the no. it's only one poll that matters and that's well and what most people don't real about realize about these national polls that these big media outlets use is that regardless the sample size is usually incredibly small Right. Uh, they have you know, their... They're usually about 500 people, maybe sometimes a thousand people, um, but it's still not representative of a state of you know of, of a few million people. Right. They try to account for everything. They've got uh, algorithms and all these different variables that they try to fill in the blanks, and sometimes they're uh, more right than others. Um, but uh, but ah, whatever. We don't need to get off on the subject. Let's uh, talk about yesterday. Uh, oh, but so at 8:30 we will have on um, Rachel. Uh, to talk more about what's going on in Alabama. The taxi driver behind the failed terror attack in New York City in New York City told investigators he meant to detonate his homemade pipe bomb in the busy subway station after seeing the walls festooned with Christmas posters and revenge for violence against Muslim, Muslims all over the world. While initial reports suggested the crude pipe bomb made from a pipe, a 9-volt battery, match heads, sugar, Christmas tree lights, and screws had detonated prematurely. Uh, the suspect, Akayed Ula, 27, insisted, insisted he set off the bomb deliberately. But they're saying, no, you didn't, buddy. That was an accident. <laughs> and it didn't even kill him. No. This is one of those uh, this is one of those funny terror attacks where nobody dies. It's like an Ahmed the terrorist situation. Right, where nobody dies, including the terrorist. Um, the bombing attack at the Port Authority bus station uh, comes just days after Donald Trump recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital, sparking violence between Israelis and Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Uh, this guy who was arrested and taken for questioning after the bomb only partially detonated told police he was walking through the end. All right, so he might have been a might have detonated it purposefully, but it, the whole thing didn't go off. That's why he didn't kill himself or anybody else. Yeah, I mean, whatever make-it-home bomb kit they sent him, I guess, uh, didn't come with instructions. Uh, it wasn't a very good one. So he told police he was walking through the underground tunnel between the Port Authority stations towards Times Square when he saw the Christmas-themed posters in the wall, which reminded him of ISIS calls last month for militants and lone wolves to attack holiday markets. Oh, so this is hypnosis. That's what it is. That's how ISIS is getting through these people. They're hypnotizing them. And then when they see certain things, they get triggered, and all of a sudden they, they, uh, they perform their attack. Yeah, I think Beep. this is more ISIS uh, and that sort of thing than it is has anything to do with Israel. <laughs> From what I understand, it all kind of ties together in the end. I mean, you could make that association. I just, I think that's a little too obvious. And uh, and again, the guy's not Palestinian. He's, you know, I mean, 
Well, he said that he specifically that he specifically did this because of ISIS, not Al Qaeda. So he wanted everybody to know. I have been watching ISIS videos. Right. I guess he's even flown back to Bangladesh, and who knows how he got uh, radicalized along the way. Uh, the attack comes days after Ula's Brooklyn neighbors say they heard a huge row coming from his home, a fight, reporting uh, yelling and screaming over the past two nights. His parents have since released a statement saying they are outraged by the allegations and the treatment of their family since the terror attack. Yeah, and then I see that they're going after the authorities, which I can, I understand to a certain degree, but they need to calm the F down. Any Any family member needs to calm down. Uh, if their child or somebody they know and love is caught, is a terror, you know, ends up yeah. a, a, executing a terror attack. Now, here's why they're uh, they're bitching, um, because authorities then just started pulling family members out of schools and stuff, including minors, including like a four year old or something like that. And so they're saying, listen, you can't do that unless there's a lawyer. Pray. You can't just go ripping a four year old out of school. Yeah. Um, you know, da, 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 da. But I think they can. I think because of the sensitivity of, you know, because you, they're trying to the severity of it. Yeah, because yeah. they're in a situation where they don't know if there's going to be another attack right behind. Da, 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 da. So they're doing anything and everything they can in that in that uh, moment here. But well, it's, it's like the parents who complain about, well, you know, why did their kids get shot after breaking into somebody's house? Right. You know, it's like, mm, I don't know. I don't think you have a lot of moral ground to stand on on this one. So this is the guy on the uh, on the gurney there uh, after the attack. What a horrible bomb maker! So is he is he going to be allowed into is he going to be allowed seventy two versions? Of- <laughs> Dude, that guy's God, a laughing stock. Allah, I tried, I tried, but for some reason you messed with my bomb and it, it, it wouldn't go off right. So sorry, sorry, buddy, no versions for you. That guy right now is the laughing stock of the you know the the terrorist network. <laughs> Um, so let's uh, continue on that. CNN pivots to coverage on Trump's diet coke consumption minutes after New York City attack. So this is going to be a good one for you, sir, for my right wing friends <laughs> who love to uh, tee off on uh, CNN. On Monday, Americans awoke to the news of an attempted terrorist attack in New York City. Thankfully, nobody was seriously injured in the attack, which was believed to be a failed suicide bombing uh, carried by uh, carried out by some inspired someone inspired by ISIS. But beyond that. CNN had some really pressing news to report. President Donald Trump sure does drink a whole lot of Diet Coke, eh? (laughs) Uh, So then people started capturing this and tweeting about it, putting on Instagram and Facebook that you, you flip over to the other news networks including Fox News, and they're covering what's going on in New York City. Right. You know, this thing went, went down to 720. Now, granted, this is an hour and a half later, but still an hour and a half is not that... Uh, not a lot of time between a terror incident and people figuring out what's going on. So apparently a New York Times report suggests that Trump's drinks a, a dozen cans of Diet Coke a day. Well, I, I'm, w- I'm with you, Mr. President, on that one. I'm probably... <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I'm two or three a day, and I'd, I'd be up to half a dozen if... Your, your if team- I. At his stress level, oh yeah, you'd be at a dozen Diet Cokes easy. Yeah, you're right. If I was a uh, president and I weren't allowed to have my medicine at night, <laughs> then then Diet Coke is the only thing I would have. Diet Coke and Chinese food <laughs> was is my Xanax, my anti anxiety medicine. There you go. Uh, all right, so which will while this probably makes Trump's dentist wince a little bit. No, it, I'm sure that it doesn't because it's Diet Coke. It's not sugary Coke. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter. Of national security, nor does it seem like it would be more important than the reporting on an attempted terrorist attack in a major American city. But then again, I'm not the one making program decisions over at CNN. CNN was criticized over covering this bizarre story when there were clearly other pressing events happening. I'll go ahead and pull that up on the old uh, big. I mean, there's again there there are how many hours in the day where they could have held on to this story and run it later, and it would have been perfectly fine. Why? go into this story merely hours after a terrorist attack. It was probably one of these things where they had it like on the slate, right? right? They had it like they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about this today. And then like, oh, crap, now this terrorist attack happens and we don't know what to talk about now. (laughs) Uh, So somebody tweets out, remember when everyone criticized Fox News for talking about the uh, the hamburger emoji? I would love people to give the same scrutiny to CNN and MSNBC who cut away from a terror attack to talk about Trump watching TV and drinking Diet Coke. Uh, Hey, CNN, I normally would not support Trump, 
But that last segment on his uh, TV and Diet Coke habits was horrible. Move on to real news, not gossip and complete speculation, especially when a pipe bomb just went off in New York City. And so the, one of the uh, people here, all right, more than 845. Uh, more than an hour, an hour and a half, basically, after the pipe bomb story broke, CNN was busy with Trump's Diet Coke. Note the ticker at the bottom right of NYPD responding. So what they're showing here is a screen capture of uh, CNN and Fox News. CNN's talking about Diet Coke while Fox News is in the streets of New York uh, covering the story. Been bouncing back and forth between CNN and Fox to compare coverage of the New York City attack this morning. CNN took a break to update us on uh, Trump's Diet Coke intake. Uh, and uh, let's see, 8.46 a.m. today, just more than an hour after an attempted suicide bomb attack in Manhattan, CNN was reporting about Trump drinking eight Diet Cokes a day. Let that sink in. Uh, and then, because this is coming from Town Hall, which it does lean more conservative, right? Definitely. Uh, so, uh, full disclosure, I'm not a soda drinker. Combinated beverages, beverages aren't my thing. And I've probably had fewer than 12 cans of soda in my life. The concept of drinking that many a day is something that my brain can't comprehend. Regardless, if Trump wants to do this, he totally can. He's a free American who can do what he wants, including reportedly drinking over a gallon of Diet Coke a day. But for the love of Pete, it'd be best for everyone if our news channel stuck to covering actual news. I agree 100% on that one. Yeah, I mean, remember, I mean, there was that, uh, you know, there was that little kind of blip where, People were obsessing over uh, Obama still smoking, even though uh, he claimed he was he had quit. Right. And he, it turns out he hadn't. And I mean, again, if you're president of the United States, I mean, you're you're going to need some sort of stress relief. Right. And uh, I mean, if 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 Diet Coke and cigarettes are the worst thing that we have to worry about, uh, I'm okay with that. Listen, when they when they go on their see, well, I guess that you know you have to stay drug free for four years or eight years. <laughs> no, I was going to say when you go on a retreat or something like that, if you need to have a couple of puffs. You know, while you're there, but but things but shit can go down while you're at Camp David. You know, yeah, right? I mean, Mar a Lago, <laughs> and uh, and you you need to have Trump's your never, <laughs> you Trump is never going to Camp David. You can't have him walking in with the uh, the nuclear football, going, Mister President. We have a di- we have a decision you need to make right now, huh? What? Who's in my room? Put SpongeBob SquarePants back on. I'm on vacation. Uh, sorry for yelling into your ears this morning. I realize that a lot of you consume your uh, online content via earbud. And the last thing <laughs> the last thing you need is my coarse voice yelling in your ear. And also the last thing you need is this, this next story. When we uh, saw the story yesterday of the missing canine officer, nor- or the yeah, canine officer, or no, canine period, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> yesterday we were hoping it would end in uh, good news, and it did not. Um, so let me put this good looking guy or gal up on the uh, screen as well. And so this, this guy right here, Ido has been found dead in Northport. Um, he was found less than a half mile from his handler's home, Sarasota animal services. They did a necropsy necropsy on him, And it looks like that, uh, everything's consistent with being hit by a car. So he got out of his handler, the cage and somehow got out. And it just so uh, you don't want to see uh, you know any dog go down like this, but obviously any kind of a dog that's uh, you know servicing us that the way they are, you would you'd, you'd hope that they'd uh, they'd be able to retire and stud yeah. and live happily ever after. But I mean, it's devastating yeah. enough uh, to lose an animal you know that that you've raised and, uh, and that you you have beside you on a daily basis to have one that essentially is your partner bred and right and trained to save your life yeah and to save others lives uh, i mean i can't even imagine what this officer must be going through um in, in losing this dog um because because you're beating yourself up too oh because of you know because the dog was able to get out even if you're like oh there's nothing i could you're gonna beat yourself up yeah uh for something like that and you know he is he's probably wondering you know what he did or why you know how he got out and whether or not he was responsible for it or you ever seen a dog get hit by a car um i think what a, so what yeah. a traumatic it's, experience that is yeah saw it twice uh growing up well, uh, one uh, or no 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 once just once growing up and it the the it was going the opposite direction and i don't remember why i turned around or how i saw it or whatever it was 
but the dog had gotten under in the leg, had gotten trapped in the wheel or was in the wheel because it, it tumbled a couple times. Like it, uh. it got it hit and then it tumbled a little bit. We were driving another direction. I never knew what happened to the dog or yeah. anything like that. Uh, but def- it's, it's it's still an image that's seared into my brain. Uh, we have one, two, three, four. Let's just say hopefully three. No, we got four sexual harassment stories or, you know, things all in kind of that category. Before we get to an amazing story of a six-year-old who made $11 million in one year doing what? Reviewing toys. Oh, the unboxing. Yeah, that's huge. The unboxing of toys. You know, we had uh, Santa Claus in here yesterday. That's right. Our buddy Shriner. And, uh, you know, he's he he's looks like Santa. He wants to do some stuff, you know, try to make a little bit of money online being Santa. And this and that. I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, just sit down. And start opening toys and uh, saying, just sit there. Opening and you're saying, toys, reviewing it. toys. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. And you're gonna as Santa. Oh, that I'd yes. watch that, dude. Yeah. I'd watch that all day long. Johnny would sit his uh, little girl in front of the year two year YouTube channel all day. Yeah. So there is. We have some sunshine at the. But for the next uh, <clears throat> however many minutes, uh, we gotta we gotta wallow in the the bowels of humanity. <laughs> So look at this. Well, good morning to uh, Jeff and Jessica. Jessica actually caught our new intro this morning, and she she liked it. And yeah, thank you to Roy for uh, putting that together. Um, yeah, it looks really good. And uh, good morning, my buddy Jason. David Capote is always checking in. By the way, we got to talk to him about uh, doing Lady Gaga's outfits. That, that that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm going to be bringing him my stuff here so- shortly. I've uh, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go. You know, instead of going to some random dry cleaners in St. Pete, if we got uh, David Capote who owns a dry cleaner right around the corner and is a huge is supporting us. Yeah, support him exactly. All right. You ever watch this guy's show? Uh, I, I've caught him on a variety of shows. There's what the Chew I think is one of his shows. Yeah. Um, I, I catch him here and there, but he's not one of my favorites. I yeah. mean, I've caught him a couple of times, but I can't remember where. I, the The Chew doesn't sound familiar to me, so I don't know if I saw him on something else. He's but. on Food Network all the time and stuff. I mean, he's all right. It's just, um, but but you're right. Going back to kind of what we were saying about instinct, you know, my ex who loves the Food Network and anything Food Network, Cooking Channel, that all that stuff cannot stand him she doesn't like him yeah. like she's always had like a bad vibe about him i yeah, yeah i hate it because that's when you when i can see my prejudices when a story pop, i go yeah i can see it what do you mean you can see it um uh, that, just, that just that just highlights my prejudices and i don't know where it comes from although he does remind me of somebody in particular who is a absolute creep so that's probably where it comes from well four, you know the grown man with the ponytail thing also doesn't help so four women made sexual misconduct allegations now three of them had worked for him in the past uh, three of the women worked for Batali at one point in their careers. One former employee alleged Batali repeatedly grabbed her from behind and held her tightly against his body. Another claimed he groped her and in one incident compelled her to straddle him. The third claimed he grabbed her breasts at a party, though she no longer worked for him. At the time of the alleged attack, the fourth woman identified as a chef who never worked for Batali recalled how the chef groped her chest after she accidentally splashed. Uh, was splashed with wine at a party. He just went to town, and I was so shocked. Jaw on the ground, and just stepped back from him in utter disgust and walked away. Uh, the publication spoke with nearly three dozen current and former Batali employees for the investigation, many who described him as having a reputation of inappropriately using sexual innuendo in workplace conversation. Uh, just another story that's going to affect, uh, it's, it's going to have a ripple effect across it's going to add just another stone, another ripple to all the ripples that are out there right now yeah. and how people, how we talk in the workplace. And I know that we will bring this back, these kind of stories back to our own experiences. Um, well, you know, and, and honestly, at the level that he's at, you know, so what we're talking about restaurant industry. Right. At the level that he operates, it also gets incredibly difficult for women to to move up in that space yeah that's a male dominated industry like so many other industries out there and not only that but the hospitality industry in general is a very i mean i never worked in the hospitality industry or did i worked in the attraction and it's i don't know if that's hospitality i was a lifeguard at went wild i don't think that counts that's an attraction I'm not, yeah, I wouldn't yeah i'm say, not serving people i'm not right you know it's not disney I'm or s- universal i'm saving people <laughs> not serving people so uh but i do know you know just oh, because most of my friends throughout the years with bartenders, waitresses, you know, servers and whatnot. 
and the the ass grabbing and the for lack of a term, I guess the sexual harassment that is prevalent uh, between coworkers and managers because a lot of these managers aren't that much older, if any at all older yep. than the uh, the people that they're that are under them. Right, um, and it's like a, a cesspool of sexual harassment. From what I understand, yeah. if like if my if my my kids want to go into the uh, restaurant industry, I'm going to take a deep breath because I know it's like. Like the first time your kid wants to go into the deep end or, or go into, you know, like the uh, take on the raging rapids or something like that right. versus, you know, just floating down the lazy river. Yeah. Um, it's going to be good for them. I know they're going to get some bumps and bruises along the way. They're going to have like I, I even have already have in my head that they will have a superior take advantage of them if they go wow. to the restaurant industry. Um, and I think one of the reasons why it's so uh, that industry is kind of the way it is. And by the way, for those of you, if I'm completely wrong, because I, I'm not in it, my, I have a, a, a periphery. I'm on the periphery, right? I've been in, in the restaurants a lot, not just as a customer, but professionally over the years, the restaurants and bars. So I've got a certain vantage point. And from my, this is what I see from my vantage point, but it could be completely wrong. And please feel free to comment below. Uh, <laughs> but my, my, my observation is, the, that industry goes at a hyper speed. Like if your kid is going into that industry at 16, 17, 18, 19 years old and they're coming and they've never worked before or what they are. It's again, it's like they've been floating down the lazy river and all of a sudden you throw them into the ra- raging rapids, which I believe is another wet and wild term or <laughs> wet and wild reference from uh, international drive in Florida, which is now closed. But, but at the same time I would go, it's, even though they're going to get some bumps and bruises and whatever, I, I feel like they're going to, it's going to toughen them up. But then this kind of goes back to the conversation that we were having yesterday when I was saying that's the wrong way for you to look at the way that you were bullied when you were, you were punched at three years old, yeah. just, just for being different, right? Yeah. Just for being white or Hispanic or whatever. Yeah. It was white. They thought you were. They thought I was white. They thought you were. Yeah. How dare they? And you're like, oh, yay. No. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Sorry, that's that's the extent of my Spanish. That and oh. and your racism, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> no, the racism runs much deeper than that. Oh, okay. But uh, the the theory that I have is that for one, it's moving at a you know at, at hyper speed when you get into the restaurant industry. You, you know, yeah, there are downs times, but when you're on, you are on a hundred percent, hundred and ten, hundred and twenty. You know, you're in fifth gear. You're redlining for an entire shift. Sometimes, sometimes you do shifts, and then afterwards, you got all you make it through. You're like ah, you hold it all together because you wanted to punch out ten different people throughout the night who yeah. are complete jerks to you, and you can't. So then afterwards, what do people in the hospitality industry do? They go to the next bar over or the next restaurant over. Yep. They sit there at that bar and they start pounding drinks, smoke chain smoking oh, cigarettes. Yeah. Yep. And worst, and then there's the percentage of them that then the, the cocaine. That's where the cocaine comes out, or whatever else that is uh, going on. Very prevalent in that industry. Um, well, because it's high highs and low lows. I mean, it's it's it forces you to be by. It turns you into bipolar. Sure. Somebody who's bipolar or manic depressant or whatever they call it. So anyway, uh, so yeah, so that's that's one story. That's this. Uh, uh, well, and I just sent you uh, an interesting one that's a little more local to us. Uh oh. So there's a, a Venice mayor who uh, has been found with a pretty scandalous picture um, to be groping a woman, and uh, and and he's trying to be like, no, 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 it, it's not what it looks like, but it is very much what it looks like. I sent it to you through Messenger. A Venice mayor's controversial photo with a woman. Let's bring this bad boy. Oh, of course. Then we'll get to the ad here in a second. All right, here's the picture. Is this a Gasparilla? Uh, it kind of looks like it. Damn, it looks like it he might has be. got a handful. <laughs> looks like it was. It's, he's hurting her. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Mayor, you got to settle down there, buddy. Yeah. Um, but he's trying to play this off somehow. Like, uh, like it's not that big a deal. But uh, he, I don't know. That picture is pretty, pretty damning. An, an apparently inappropriate photo of the Venice May city mayor is circulating on social media. The photo hit social media about a year ago, but now it's back. Mayor John Hollick uh, is seen apparently groping a woman's breast as she raises her leg as she's wearing a pirate's costume. Hmm. Hmm. A private citizen emailed the mayor and the city council members to explain the photo and asked if it was real. The mayor responded saying he thinks he was set up. 
<laughs> See, politicians, man, if you are if you're a celebrity chef, sorry. If you're an actor, sorry. If you're a producer, sorry. But if you're a politician, you just throw out that you it was politics. Somebody's trying to set you up. Uh, I, I quote. <clears throat> Wait, but if public perception is important, then, then people we show the photo to say they are disgusted. I don't think the way he's touching her. I don't like the way he's touching her, said uh, someone visiting from Indiana. Well, I don't care what somebody from Indiana is. Talk to the people of Venice. <laughs> Talk- well, that's the problem. Nobody actually lives in Venice. I mean, people. Oh, you're right. Good point. Good point. <laughs> he's the mayor of no nothing. Yeah. Uh, talk about hospitality. Snowbird country down right. there. Um, Debbie Wiley from Indiana said, your mayor is holding the boob of somebody and her leg is in his crotch. I think it's disgusting. It goes all the sexual, it goes with all the sexual harassment stuff that's on TV. He says there is no sexual harassment. Now listen, the woman might be playing along, but at that point, if you're the mayor and somebody comes up and I know if, because it, this woman's wearing a pirate costume. So, you know, if it's a Gasparilla type of ce- celebration, Mardi Gras type of celebration. Yeah. There is uh, what would be considered inappropriateness in the workplace, Right. It'd be considered inappropriate in the workplace. Well, what happens at Gasparilla, you know, the night parade, especially the the non kids versions, yeah. is pretty racy. Well, and that, there are women flashing constantly. There are there's constant butt grabbing, boob yeah. grabbing, and all that kind of stuff is happening. Well, you know, the Gasparilla celebrations in Tampa used to be pretty out of control uh, until they kind of got a handle on them. And Have it, they tamed them down? Oh yeah. Was this after? I, I haven't been in it quite some time. So. <laughs> But yeah, like you know, there the, you don't have like the uh, you know women aren't pulling their shirts up anymore for the beads. Um, you know they they've put some limitations, I guess, on alcohol sales and uh, and, and it's helped. I mean, you know, it's it's a definitely more family friendly environment because the uh, the perverts. I mean, really, I mean, uh, by by perverts, I mean uh, no predators, not perverts. Because I got a little perversion in me. You got a little pervert. There, you know, there, there's fantasies in our head that you know aren't hurting anybody or da da da. da that if we have, predators, yeah. you know. But uh, what I mean by the perverts or the slash predators um, at Gasparilla would be because because they know they know they know this that what's going down out there, right? And so they wait for the opportune time and grope children. They're groping fourteen year olds, thirteen year olds, twelve year olds. Um. So, so what should happen to this guy then? Well, that's the thing. Did this happen while he was mayor? Is question okay, number one. Okay, good one. Um, and if so, yeah. I mean, look, I, if I, you're an elected official, you're on all the time. If anytime you're out in public, outside of your own home, and even still, I mean, if something goes down inside your house, that could become yeah. a public issue as well. But if you are uh, outside of your own home, I think it's fair game no, because you're an elected official and you're on at all times. So here he goes. He says the uh, the year old photo isn't what it appears to be. He and his wife were enjoying an afternoon on Venice Avenue when a former barber walked up with a group of friends dressed like pirates. He said one woman in the group asked to take a photo. Quote, I don't know her name. Never saw her before. She said, do the pirate pose and say, girl, all of a sudden at the same time her legs go up or her leg goes up. Her hand grabs mine and puts them there. Pollock says he touched a balloon in her dress, not her breast. <laughs> Wait, show that picture again. Hold on, let's see. Because uh, that certainly doesn't look like a balloon to me. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. He might be right. Uh, I, I don't. Can you put this thing up? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me actually let me point at it first because I want to show the the boob that he's not touching. Look how far it's uh, poking out. It does look like there's something fake in there. All right, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Okay, this this boob over here, this over here, by the looks. This I, is the forensic expert <laughs> portion of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, I, I, I'm going, I'm not going to pass judgment. It's right for now. scientific that, reasons. Okay, I'm not going to pass judgment yet. Because it does look like it, it's like it's a very odd shaped, a very pointy coming out. So maybe there are some fake boobs under her boobs there, and that's what he's grabbing. Still, if you're mayor, that's that, that's still yeah, inappropriate. I don't right. know. If you, you it need, just looks horrible. Right. I don't know that you need to step down or anything like that. But uh, it's it's something that you we don't want our mayors participating in. But sometimes this stuff goes down so quickly. You know the person. So then everybody else around you, you've constantly you've put in their friendly category because you know the barber that you're talking to right there. Was like, hey, do the pirate pose. Okay, I'll have a good time. Leg comes up, she grabs your hand. Ah, just snap and then all of a sudden you're like, eh, well, I hope that doesn't hit the internet. And the next time Oh, everything hits the internet. So, you know, I I don't, I don't want to pass judgment on 
any one of these people. And I know that we uh, talked a little bit about this yesterday. I don't want to pass judgment personally on any one of them. Uh, I, I don't know any of them. I wasn't there. Yeah, but some of these, they have 20 allegations, 40 allegations. Okay, 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 that's fine. Let the system play, let it play out. And if those people need to go down, they can go down. I don't sit, need to sit here there and pout at my fist and go, this person, that, that person. What I can do, like we talked about yesterday, is take all of these, put them together, and go, all right, let's, work, let's, let's move these conversations forward about how we're going to interact with each other when we're in public, how we're going to act with each other in the workplace and when we're not in the workplace. So um, I think all of this stuff, even though they're, some of these hor- they're, they're horrible stories, and I feel so horrible for the, a lot of the people that have gone through the harassment, uh, the assault, um, but hopefully the silver lining is with everybody coming forward, everybody you know, revealing horrible things that has happened to them in their own lives, that others take stock. And start to really think about uh, you know what they're doing and what their actions are. I mean, Johnny. Uh, well, and for some people, this is going to bring closure as well. I mean, this is something that they've been carrying for you're right, years. You're right. And one thing that I don't think, uh, well, I certainly haven't heard much about, is the fact that for some of these uh, who are truly victims of something horrible, uh, this will hopefully bring them closure. Uh, just the other day, a friend of mine on Facebook had, you know, posted a huge post, and it it was her Me Too moment. Uh, somebody I've known for years and love and care for, uh, but to see her write about her experience where she was at in Europe in her younger days, um, and did one of the things, you know, believed the guys on the mopeds that wanted to take him around the city and show him a good time with her and her friend, and they had the best time, you know, that day, and then they go back to you know their apartment or something like that. And her friend wanted to hook up with one of the guys. So they go off into a room and she'll, she's left alone with this other guy and he's ready for sex. And she's like, no, 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 this is not happening. And he goes, yes, it is. And he rips her clothes off and says, all American women are whores and this is what you want. Uh, she's screaming and crying through this whole entire thing. And finally, her friend does hear from down the hall. It comes in and saves her. Um, but this is something that she's held on to forever and is finally not only that that was just one part of the story by the way johnny Jeez. she cause she started the story when she was like eight or nine or ten or something <clears> ridiculous <throat> of her first experience with uh sexual predators or, or i can't remember or maybe she was 12 at the mall she said when she looked up and saw that uh, some man not a not another 14 you're not a 12 year old not a, a the child a 16 year old boy being stupid yeah. a man videotaping up her skirt there at the uh, at oh, the wow. mall, she's twelve years old, and then she goes on to another story at fourteen, sixteen, and then gets to this story. Um, so you're right; it is uh, cathartic for a lot of people who have been holding on to this stuff their entire life, trying to in it in, in it surface that bubbles it up every now and again, and sends you spiraling into a depression because you start battling with that moment. You're just still you're there's still a part of your brain that is still there. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Start start breaking shit around here. Hold on, Hank. Hey, hold on, rant baby. Let me get your microphone back to where it needs to be there. All right. Turn it the other way. Oh, the other way. There, no. there you there go, right go. there. There you go. There you go, rant baby. Whenever you're ready. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, rant baby, chime in. You too, Wookie. Um, and for those people who aren't watching or just listening right now, going, what the hell's he what the hell he's talking about? Um Where was I before I punched? Uh, well, you were telling before the I story broke the about set. your friend, uh, you oh, know, okay. in Europe. So, Johnny, you're right. To your point, um, this is a, a, a certain amount of catharsis for, I think, a lot of people as well. And at the same time, um, hopefully it changes the culture, the way that we approach um, women. Okay, the next next up. Uh, well, you want to create that environment that allows them to feel safe and, and report these things and, and talk about these things uh, because I'm sure she's been carrying those experiences for her entire life and it's been a heavy burden to carry with her. One of the um, the arguments or one of the things that bothers me throughout the, all of this is every time there's the next person or the next person that is, comes up uh, you know, and is, they're on the chopping block, then you have those who are trying to defend that person say, well, why now? You know, why? It's been 20 years. It's been 30 years. It's been 40 years. Why now? Why now? F you. You know, 
this is a this is traumatic for a lot of people. And they don't know what to do. They feel like in that moment that, or they go to talk to one person and they 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 just they push it to the side. Yeah, they felt like nobody's cared right. for all these years. Or if they try to go after this person, that they're going to get end up losing their job. They can't afford to lose their job. They got kids at home. This and this and this. And that's one of the things that played into the predator's head in the first place. Yep. They, that they know they have control over you. Yep. So next up, Larry King. Bring down your levels a little bit for me. Um, all levels? Yeah. Check, check, test one, two, one, two. Aye. Aye. Terry Richard, an ex-wife of singer Eddie Fisher. Uh, actually, you know what? It's time for, let's get right back to uh, stuff you should know, and then we'll come back to uh, some other well, stuff. Well, before, before you get started on that, um, be- because we forgot yesterday, we've actually got two tickets to the Gasparilla Music Festival to give away. And so uh, I'm going to put a little graphic together here to, to you know, for us to kind of play don't during you, the, the show. But don't you crash the system? No. <laughs> um, but uh, if you want to be in the running for these two tickets to the Gasparilla Music Festival, uh, head over to our website, thewake.show. That's thewake.show, not dot com, dot show. Uh, and uh, at the very bottom, there's a form there for our contest. Uh, submit uh, the form there, and you'll be in the running for two general admission tickets to the Gasparilla Music Festival. Thanks to Dave Cox and his team for providing those to our show. That's the wake dot show. The wake dot www dot the wake dot show. No dot com. Stuff you should know, a pipe bomb prematurely went off in an underground tunnel linking the Times Square subway station and the Port Authority bus. Now, the terrorists said it did not prematurely go off. He detonated it the way that he wanted to, except only half the bomb went off, I guess. I meant to fail. The only, you know, the, the entire bomb didn't go off. That's what, it, that's what, that's what was supposed to happen. Uh, so anyway, it's a 27-year-old uh, unmarried green card holder by the name of Akayed Ula who came to the U.S. seven years ago from Bangladesh on a visa for people who have family in the U.S. He was the only one seriously injured in the blast. Oops. To Lakewood High... Yes, sir? No, I was going to make a really bad joke. Well. <laughs> Somebody actually stopped him in the subway station and said, hey, is that a pipe bomb in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> to Lakewood High students... No, are re- too soon. <laughs> you know, well, hey, listen, nobody died. Nobody died, so you're okay. You could have made that one now yesterday morning right afterwards. <laughs> nobody died. Two Lakewood High students arrested Monday now facing felony charges, weapon charges after the school was placed on lockdown following reports of a weapon on campus. The 16-year-olds were charged with possession of a weapon on a school campus and aggravated assault. How did the authorities track them down? Because they're geniuses and they posted pictures of it on Snapchat with a little locator thing on. So it led them right to them. Now listen, uh, these kids need to be exp- uh, expelled obviously, right? But in the elementary school level, they shouldn't like I remember bringing a switchblade my dad's switchblade which yeah. was illegal at the time and uh he had gotten it in North or not North Korea he'd got it in Korea when he was over there for the war right uh and so I brought it to school one day did I bring it to school because I feel like I needed to protect myself no I bring it to school because I thought I would need it no I brought it to school because I thought it was cool and I wanted it to look cool for my other, you yeah, know, you friends. want to show it to your friends. So I did. I showed it to my friends. Now, luckily for me, a te- I didn't get caught. You know, there's no teacher yeah. that saw it because, you know, got, well, this would have been the early 80s. So I'm sure it would have yeah. been more of a. But see, like nowadays, I brought, a, I brought a rubber band gun and which was really cool. I mean, it was wooden and it had the little cog wheel, you know, that would hold onto the rubber bands. You could shoot off about a half a dozen rubber bands. And I brought it to school. Nowadays, that would probably get you exposed. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Or at least suspended for a week yeah. for bringing something that even looks like a gun. All right. Um, a paraeducator in Bartow was arrested after police say she struck a disabled student in the face. It happened at Gene Odell Learning Center on December 4th. A witness said the seven-year-old student, who is nonverbal and intellectually disabled, became upset and started to kick his feet towards Murphy, at which point she hit him in the face with an open hand. During the investigation, the witness said this was not the first incident of abuse involving Murphy. So you might be asking yourself, well, how is she in charge of children? How does she how is she back in the classroom helping learning disabled children if she has a history of this? I don't have an answer for you. That is a great question. The Charlotte County Sheriff's Office is reporting that the K-9 Edo has been found dead in Northport. He was found uh, less than a half mile from his handler's home. Sarasota Animal Services completed the necropsy. And preliminary results show the internet, the internal injuries to Edo are consistent with being hit by a car. Celebrity chef Mario Batali has been accused of sexual harassment by four women. And Terry Richard, the ex-wife of singer 
Eddie Fisher claims Larry King groped her on two separate occasions while they were taking photos together. The 63-year-old says she was first groped by King in 05 at a baseball ceremony, uh, award ceremony in L.A. She claims he slid his hand down to her backless dress and ended up with about three or four of his fingers in the crack of my ass, quote-unquote, resting in the crack of my ass, quote-unquote, adding it lasted for several seconds. And that is Stuff You Should Know for today, Tuesday, December 12th. It's trivia night. Oh, that's right. That's right. Out at uh, Boulevard Burgers, you can join me for uh, trivia from uh, 7 until about uh, 9.30. And are you ready for a little pop quiz? Sure, let's do it. All right, here we go. Number one, worth one point. Tom Cruise played the character Ethan Hutt in which movie franchise? Mission Impossible. Ding, you get a point. Number two, in the 12 days of Christmas, if you add up the number of swans swimming and geese laying, what number do you get? Uh, 15. 13. Damn it. <laughs> number two, or number three, uh, which former Fuji's member was sentenced to three months in jail in 2013 for tax evasion? Um, Wyclef Jean. Lauren Hill. Damn it. Number four, who was the first Roman emperor? Was it Caesar, Augustus, or Paul? Uh, I'll go Augustus. Augustus is right, sir. Nice. That was a guess. And number five, who is Liza Minnelli's mom? Uh, Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Yeah, we talked about that one. Yep, that was the uh, question that uh, stumped uh, my team out at uh, the the other gig, uh, my Thursday night gig last the, week. That uh, made them lose the perfect game. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you can join me Tuesday nights at Boulevard Burger St. Pete Beach from 7 until about uh, not uh, 8. Technically, it's supposed to be 830, but I'm a little long-winded. <laughs> it's usually more like 845. Good morning to uh, Lisa Kraft, my buddy Mike, uh, who's also a fellow radio guy, uh, working right up the street at Salem. Hey, Mike! And uh, and Catherine, uh, also a loyal watcher, viewer. Hi, Catherine. <laughs> so now do you want to get to uh, this uh, NFL harassment suit involving a lot of people? Really? Oh, you didn't, oh, I didn't, oh, okay. I didn't see this one. Good, good, good. Let's do this then. Um, a former executive producer at the National Football League's TV network and ex-players, including Marshall Falk and Heath Evans, allegedly groped and made sexually explicit comments to female colleague Jamie Cantor, according to an uh, amended complaint by Cantor, a former employee. Um, so in the story, I just have to let you know, in the story, there's not a picture of her. My, my first instinct, my first instinct when I saw the story was to look up a picture of her. Why? Because I'm, I'm a, I guess, I got it. I, 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 I took, it's a guy it's thing. It's a guy it's thing, right. Instinct. It's like, okay, you want to see, you know, the, the subject uh, at hand here. Right, and it's not out of curiosity. It's your brain wants to see, wants to see if she's, well, how hot she is. <laughs> if she's being groped this morning. And I, and I, and I uh, it's, I'm only bringing it up because I'm being honest. And. <laughs> I did, but however, I fought the urge and I didn't look her up. I'm not even kidding. I fought the urge and I didn't look up. Well, why don't you just go ahead and look her up? Because I feel like I, I shouldn't have re reward that. That's a part of me I'd like to change. Oh, this uh, this woman, well, we want to find, well, just, I don't know what it is. And I know it's not just me. I know that, you know, it's not like a 1% a kind of a thing and I'm a weirdo. I know that men and women, the first thing you want to do is go find a picture of that person. So the allegations against the retired players and Eric Weinberger, who's now president of sports, comment, of sports commentator Bill Simmons Media Group, are part of a lawsuit against the NFL or NFL Enterprises. The amendment complaint filed Monday detailed specific acts of harassment by several individuals who are not named as defendants. Cantor, a wardrobe stylist at the NFL Network, said Weinberger sent several nude pictures of himself and sexually explicit texts and told her she was put on earth to pleasure him. He also uh, pressed his crotch against Cantor's shoulder and asked her to touch it, according to the complaint. She said she was also sexually harassed by on-air talent. Falk, who's an NFL Network analyst, would ask Cantor deeply personal and evasive questions about her sex life and fondled her breasts and groped her behind. Ike Taylor, also an analyst, sent Cantor sexually inappropriate pictures of himself and a video of him masturbating in the shower, according to the filing. Donovan McNabb, a former analyst, also texted her explicit, comment, explicit comments, according to the complaint. Holy crap. 
Alex Rettmeyer, a spokesperson. Well, I told you. I, I, I mean, I, I'd been saying this for a couple weeks now. I, it was, it was only a matter of time. I'm like, where, where, where are we in the sports industry? Right. You know, and and now. Well, ESPN started. had their own. They before all this broke, was it? Uh, it's been a couple years now, maybe two or three years. But sports, uh, sports center, didn't they? Or ESPN rather, not sports center. ESPN didn't they go through some something like this? I think so, but it was. It, I don't think it was. But it was gone as severe, I and mean, it was here and gone was, before you know it. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, but uh, they they look at it this way. You're like, you you know what this is when you come out, you know, come work here. So mm-hmm. you either uh, are ready to come here and play grab ass with us. And or get the f out. We'll do whatever we work. We're, we're 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 professional athletes. We're millionaires. We'll do whatever the hell we want around yeah. here. Alex Rittmiller, or however you say his last name, a spokesperson for NFL Network, said Falk, Taylor, and Evans have been suspended from their duties pending an investigation into the allegations. Uh, Weinberger hung up the phone when reached for comment. Joe Segal, who represents Taylor, didn't immediately return a voicemail. Um, Cantor first filed her case in October claiming wrongful termination. Laura Horton, a lawyer for Cantor, said by phone, it's outrageous conduct and I fully intend to hold the NFL network responsible. Now, she is claiming that these people, well, then she better, she has the evidence, I'm assuming. Hmm. I mean, if you're going to claim all this. See, also when there's wrongful termination suits, yeah, not that a red flag has to go up, but you have to, you know. Go all right. Somebody gets fired. He goes all right. You're going to fire me. F you. I'm going to take you all down. Sure. It, it, but if she's claiming that she's got these texts, videos, and pictures, well, then there you go. Uh, she said by phone, "It's outrageous conduct, and I fully intend to hold the NFL Network responsible." While men across politics, media, entertainment, and technology have been fired over that allegations of sexual harassment, there have been few recent high-profile cases in the world of sports just like you were talking about so simmons who uh media properties include the website ringer has praised weinberger in the past quote he's a talented guy with an impeccable reputation someone who is uniquely equipped to help me build an innovative multimedia company from scratch i know from experience that you're only as good as the people around you and eric is one of the best he said at the time well that's that's what you say when you hire somebody to run your organization um but when you see something, how, how does this how does this story play out in your head? Just speculation. Somebody is flirting with this girl or sending whatever, and she's not shutting it down, right? So I I picture her <laughs> like nervously, you know, just trying to laugh it off or play it off or whatever, whatever. Right. But if guy after guy after guy is participating in this. Then it's spreading around the group that this girl is is down. Yeah. Right. Is cool with whatever. Right. So now they're all sending her pictures of their junk, explicit pictures. You're here just to pleasure me. Um, And, you know, basically they're they feel comfortable treating her like a whore. Well, and 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 uh, again, it gets tricky because if she allowed it to perpetuate didn't report it, didn't bring it to anyone's attention, didn't express her disgust or or d- disagreement or disappointment with it. You know, at what point did she perpetuate that behavior? Right. Um, also, that gets very, th- those kinds of statements also ring, uh, it, it, it frustrates people who have been victims of this because how this stuff happens, it happens incrementally. You, it, it happens slowly where, okay, maybe, it, yeah, you're right. In the very beginning when this was first, it was just this, this, and this. Yeah, I'm like, you know, whatever. It's not my thing, but I can just laugh it off and move on to something else. But then they 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 put their foot a little bit more in the door, put their yeah. foot a little bit more. There. And next thing you know, in your position going, God damn it, what, what, what's going on here? But, and, and that's how they get trapped because in their head they're going, well, I allowed for this and this, so how can I say this now? But then you, know, you fast forward a little bit. And all these allegations, you know, so so now you feel a little bit more emboldened, empowered, because you have so many other women and some men coming forward going, this has happened to me too, and this shit has to stop across the board in the sports world. I feel like this is just the beginning, though. Is Johnny is right. In all due respect, is I, I'm, I've gotten the chance to know a lot of professional athletes over the years and uh, a lot of uh, people in the sports media and whatnot, and there are good people, and there are people that I – I would not. I could. I. I could not see this. They're. They're good, normal human beings. 
But, man, there are still, because you're treated a certain way from when you were five, six, as soon as they realize that you're special and you can run faster than the other kids, you can hit harder than the other kids, your hand-eye coordination is better than the other kids, you're immediately put into a different category. And yeah. you then have set up, I mean, look at Jameis Winston. Right. Um, and these allegations throughout college, the things that we know happened while he was in college, the allegations out of college, you're put in a category where you get to reach out and break something, touch something yet that you're not supposed to be in a pro and go, ah, ah, oh, well, he's Jameis Winston or he's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Jay, I don't need to bring him into this conversation here. He's got his own shit to deal with. All right. Uh, set, you know, separate from this, just in general. Um, and, and when these, uh, they, they, they get to go from level to level to level without any ramifications, repercussions. Why? Because it's more important for the football team to win. Well, and it's they're also handed everything on a silver platter. So, uh, there is a culture of, I get to touch whatever I want, whenever I want, I get to do whatever I want, whenever I want. And hopefully that is changing too. So all of this has put the spotlight back on our president, Donald Trump, because as sexual harassment allegations uh, keep coming out of, uh, about everybody else in politics and in sports and entertainment and the restaurant industry and the technology industry, there's just one glaring thing out there. Well, the guy that's president right now had a lot of uh, uh, allegations, and it wasn't just by two, three you know, women. So sexual harassment allegations against President Trump were thrust back into the spotlight Monday after three of his accusers banded together for a media tour. Um, how much of that did you watch yesterday, Johnny? Because you sent me the link to watch some of it. Did you did you check it out yourself? No, uh, no. Because they had to a, watch too much of it. They had a movie produced and everything. No, that's that's the real kind of weird shady part about it is that you know this was a media company that was kind of behind this press conference. Um, you know, uh, and of course the timing of it, you know, the fact that Conyers is on his way out, Franken's on his way out, they're looking like they're cleaning house to then be able to build the argument that, Hey, we did our job in cleaning house. Now, you know, now the Congress has to step up. Well, I, for, for, they, 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 these women have already come out. They came out last year yeah, and along with others. And so now they are back basically now that there's this wave of people coming out saying I've been sexually harassed. I've been sexually assaulted. And I'm not just going to sit here and not doing anything anymore. Jessica Lee, Samantha Holvey, and Rachel Crooks recounted alleged harassments by Trump stories they first shared during the 2016 presidential campaign. Excuse me. Uh, I asked that Congress put aside their party affiliations and investigate Mr. Trump's history of sexual misconduct. She said Trump has escaped his past unscathed, but over a dozen women have come forward about his sexual misconduct. And we have the video proof of him promoting such behavior, referring to the 2005 Access Hollywood tape in which Trump can be heard boasting about groping women. Hours later, the Democratic Women's Working Group announced that 56 female lawmakers were officially requesting the House Oversight Committee probe allegations against Trump. The White House vehemently reiterated its denials, accusing the women of having political motives and arguing the matter was settled during the election. Um, in one story, a British man denied Leeds' ac accusation that Trump groped and kissed her during a commercial flight in the 80s. The October 2016 interview was arranged by the Trump campaign. In another story from 2016, the winner of the 2006 Miss Teen USA pageant said that Trump never came backstage to Ogle contestants, as Holvey alleged he did during the standard Miss USA pageant that year. The White House did, well, he also said that he did um, on yeah. Howard Stern's show. He, right. he bragged about how, well, when you own the, uh, the, uh, the pageant, you can go walk in into the dressing rooms whenever you want. Um, and their oversight, let's see here, the White House did not provide an eyewitness to, rebu to rebut Crooks who accused the president of forcibly kissing her 12 years ago at Trump Tower, where she worked as a young receptionist. Um, and even Trump ta has talked about this as well, that he just will go in for the kiss, just, just grab them and start kissing them, jamming his tongue down their throat. And their letter, an oversight committee chairman uh, da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da, wrote that the American people deserve a full inquiry into the truth of these allegations. Quote, we cannot ignore the multitude of women who have come forward with accusations against Mr. Trump. With that said, the president should be allowed to present evidence in his own defense. Okay, well, this is, this is where I know that pe where people on the, the right start going nuts. 
because all they can think of in their head is Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton. Right. And how the, you know, it, the, the politics of the day, they did everything they could to silence those accusers, pay them off, pay the ones off that they had to pay off, and silence the rest. Oh, Hillary destroyed. I mean, it, it, that's the one thing that I don't think is talked about enough. But, you know, Hillary literally destroyed the lives of some of these women. Right. Now, but if these things are true... But again, we've known these things for years, right? And it, so again, this has been public for a long time. The time to have done this and the time to have done something about it, I think, was before the election. I don't know why this is now seemingly wanting to well, be Well, because everything else is in the news. Because every, everything else is out there. So everybody, you know, those people who feel this is not sure, but yet. he's already handled this through the court system, right? Like he, in many cases, has already handled this. No, not privately. Not, well, but not not. Uh, so this woman wants to come forward and go, yeah, you know how he was bragging on Howard Stern, how he'd walk into uh, the dressing rooms. He walked into mine while we, and this was the Miss Teen USA. Um, and he walked into my room, too. So, I, I mean, I understand why they're coming out. And uh, say, but what do we do about it? I have no idea. Unless there's some serious. Well, and, and the fact that it happened outside of his presidency. You know, the, the thing with Bill Clinton was that it happened in the White House uh, under his watch, uh, under an intern that was uh, serving uh, in his administration. This, right. uh, all, all, the, all these allegations, all these accusations, I'm not dismissing them. I'm not saying they're not true um, in, in, in any way. I'm saying that they don't have a place here because they happened prior to his um and this his and this presidency. stuff was already out last year and America still voted him in as president. So yeah. if yeah, I don't think there's anything you do can do while he's in office unless there's that uh you know stain in the blue dress type of evidence, you know, along right. the way. But um there would have to be some damning piece of evidence for for this to be relevant right. today. Uh, but otherwise, I think you just you you take it in, and then America will decide again here in a couple years. Um, during an appearance on NBC's Megyn Kelly today, Hulvey, uh described the pain she felt after Trump's election last year. We are private citizens. Oh, by the way, we're going to uh, punch up Rachel here in a couple minutes. Do you need to send me uh, her stuff? I have to oral. Oh, could you uh, resend me something? We I mess- skyped her before, so you should be able to I'll pull her up on your down. Skype. Okay. Um, oh, I Skype. know she was having. Some technical issues this morning. I don't know if she's got them. Uh, okay, yeah, she's on Skype right now. All right, so. all right we'll come back to we'll We'll get to her here in just a minute. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Rachel. S- Rachel Hammers. Hammers, damn it. Come on now. I know, it's such a great name. Rachel Hammers, how do you forget Rachel Hammers? Because, you know, Rachel, if I hear Rachel Hammers, I'm not thinking conservative <laughs> talk show host, you know. Uh, so you would think I would say again, there's something wrong with me. I'm, tr- I'm doing the best I can change. So my brain, <laughs> my brain doesn't automatically always go to sex but i'm sure she gets that she must get that all the time i mean how do you not it's just it's too perfect of a name she didn't need a radio name because how do you forget a name like rachel hammer exactly so during an appearance on nbc's megan kelly today holvey described the pain she felt after trump's election last year quote we are private citizens and for us to put ourselves out there to try to show america who this man is and especially how he views women uh for them to say matt we don't care it hurt now, it's just like, all right, let's try round two. The environment is different. Let's try again. And a sign of how much the ground has shifted, Trump's own United Nations ambassador, Nikki Haley, said Sunday that the women who accused the president of groping or kissing them without their consent should be heard. Haley's comments on CBS's Face the Nation were a surprising break from the White House's official stance that all of Trump's accusers are lying. Sanders insisted Haley did not contradict the president. I love her. I, yeah. uh, I think she's a very special human Oh, she's being. amazing. She is. Uh, I, I, so. She's got an amazing talent. Yes. To sit up there and just look you right in the eye and bullshit you for minute after minute after <laughs> minute, day after day after day. It is, it is spectacular. Honestly, I don't know that there has been an administration more fun to watch in the White House press briefing room than this administration. Very true. I mean, you got to think it, the amount of entertainment that we've had over the past year has just been phenomenal. And look, Sean Spicer and I are Facebook friends. Like, and that only makes it that much cooler because to sit here there and watch this circus for lack of a better term play out and and i don't use that to diminish the administration i'm just saying like it's just fascinating to watch i mean there are multiple 
news outlets that go live from the White House press briefing room because it is that entertaining to watch, especially if you're a political news junkie. So Sanders insisted Haley did not contradict the president, saying that Trump, quote, thinks it's a good thing that a, that women are coming forward. But he also feels strongly that a mere allegation should not determine the course. The landscape has rapidly changed in Capitol Hill, too, where three lawmakers resigned over allegations of sexual misconduct over the course of one week. And so the uh, story goes on from there. So Mike uh, chimes in in the comments section is, uh, do we think that Al Franken incorrectly stepped down? And should Roy Moore then be allowed to serve if incidents prior to their elections don't matter? You know, if there's criminal charges or uh, if there are crimes, because inappropriateness yes. is one thing. OK, right. so we can all go. Uh, yeah, I you know, the, the president even go back to the 80s. You know, we've seen him on tape in interviews going when I come home. I, this is going to sound chauvinistic, but if I come home and dinner's not ready, I'm angry. You're right. That's going to sound chauvinistic because it is chauvinistic. <laughs> um, it shows you it shows you the part of the, that shows you a glimpse into narcissistic personality disorder. Yeah, right. But all but all of that was out there. And America still voted him in. No, that's who was I talking to the other day? Somebody telling me that this is not a real president because the electoral college is bullshit. Da, 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 da. Settle down. Those yeah, are the yeah, rules. That, yeah, that, that's not. Yeah, uh, it's like saying uh, your your favorite team football team lost. That's bullshit. They were ahead after three quarters. And for me, I think that football should only be th- three quarters. So to me, my team won. Right. So, um, <laughs> Sorry about I, your Falcons. <laughs> oh, what a! How does that even happen? I still I still don't understand. <laughs> all right, so let me pull up Skype now. And you said I can just go into my. I'm not a you know I don't Skype all the time, so I'm not no. Skype. Skype. Yeah, so well, you pull that up. I just want to uh, remind people that if uh, you go into the Wake Dot Show right now, you scroll to the bottom of our website. There's a section on there where you can register to win two tickets to the Gasparilla Music Festival. If you have not been or hor- heard of the Gasparilla Music Festival, is amazing. It's a two day event with dozens of bands. You can go to gasparillamusic.com. I don't think they've uh, started to announce their lineup, but when they do, uh, we'll have Dave Cox on the show, and uh, and and he'll uh, clue us in on who we could expect at this year's festival. But uh, it's an amazing event; it's it's growing exponentially, uh, and, and of course, tickets are on sale now. But you don't have to buy your tickets yet because you could win them through the Wake Dot Show. And again, just go online www.thewake.show. We go to Alabama now. A uh, huge election today, and you would think that it would be close, but man, you read reading all the reports, it doesn't look like it's going to be close. So let's go to Rachel Hammers now, conservative talk show host in Alabama. Good morning, Rachel. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Wow, swell thing. Oh, you sound great. Love the microphone. Oh well, <laughs> it's yeah. I, I'm in my uh, my secret lair where I do the show most of the time. All right. Well, uh, tell us about the uh, the climate right now in over the past week there in Alabama. I, I was really I, I, I don't put a lot of stock in the polls. I, I don't think there's a lot to them. I mean, we saw how it went during the the Trump election. They don't typically get it right. But you had a Fox News poll that had Doug Jones up 10 points. But they were and the only I, poll I, that, I was, had, that, that had that right. All the other polls had uh, Roy Moore ahead. Uh, the other polls had uh, Roy Moore. Ahead. Emerson had Roy Moore ahead. There was another one that was kind of a wash. Uh, but it surprised me because of what happened on Friday. Uh, Friday, you had the the Nancy Young. Uh, uh, she's got another name. Uh, your book lady. And she's the Who, original one. She's the Beverly. Fourth- Beverly, yes, Beverly Young Nelson. Thank and that's you. the that's the original one who alleged at at fourteen. Uh, sh- no, that that was oh. Lee Korfman. She was the original Washington Post. This is the okay. one that came out with the yearbook with Gloria Allred. Okay, all right. So then, uh, what she's referring to there is that uh, she had forged that. That was fake. That yearbook. Yes. That, uh, so when she came out Friday and admitted that these were polls that took place over the weekend. So to see Doug Jones in a Fox News poll up ten percent. After that came out, when you've got 71 percent of Alabamians who don't believe the allegations at all, uh, that that kind of surprised me. Um, So how do you see this playing out then today? I think it honestly could go either way. My phone has been going off all morning uh, with people from uh, different groups vying for Roy Moore pull out all the stops i think there's some things in the doug jones campaign that are going to uh help bolster the roy moore campaign i think you're going to have people who are voting against doug jones not necessarily for 
uh, well, Roy voting, Moore, but voter turnout may be extremely low. Really? I figured something like this, you're going to have, uh, it's going to be the exact opposite. Well, I know in the primaries, voter turnout was uh, just dismal. Huh. Uh, but uh, you might see, I, look, if the, if, the, if the Democrats come out, if they, if they go to vote, I, I think Doug Jones has a very good chance of being the next senator from Alabama. Uh, Roy Moore's supporters aren't going anywhere, but you have a lot of people who are on the fence. They're, they're not sure which way to go. So it's going to depend on whether or not they get out or they stay home. You know, uh, one of the 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 common sentiments that I, I keep hearing around here, you know, down here is that um, they'd rather vote in whatever his past might be, Roy Moore. They'd rather vote that singular person in because they don't they don't care what his past versus. And this is a, this is a quote voting for the party of pedophiles. That they feel like, well, if you're voting for the Democrats, well, that they are a party of of uh, pedophiles. They're a party of of sexual perversion. And so I'd rather get the one this our one guy in here who is at least on our side and deal with that singular issue versus the party of perversion. No, see, now it's totally opposite here because there's even an ad running. There's a group who's not letting their uh, their donors be known. They're hiding it. Uh, it's called Highway 31. And oh, what they're doing is they are running ads. Uh, and basically, John Merrill, the Secretary of State in Alabama, had to step in. They had to pull. He got them to pull the ads from Google and YouTube uh, because it was telling voters that if you go to the polls today and you vote for Roy Moore, your neighbors will know you voted for a pedophile, essentially, uh, giving the impression that uh, your your vote is not confidential. Now, we're on on the stream with Rachel Hammers, conservative talk show host out of Alabama. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, what does your gut tell you? What does your gut tell you about My Roy Moore? My gut says Moore, about Roy this, Moore is going to win today. That he's going to win, uh, win today. What does your gut tell you about the allegations? I believe that he had an affinity for younger women. I, I think if you look at the... Uh, the time frame, uh, he was 38, she was 24 when he married his wife. Uh, same, same. Uh, what, my same wife and I are 14 of, years apart? <laughs> are you? Well, see, there you go. Um, no, but uh, he, you know, so I, I think when he came home from Vietnam, I think that you have to look at the, it was the end of the 70s. Uh, one girl by her own admission said that. Her mother uh, told her to go out with him because he was good husband material. Right. Uh, right. So you, you look at you look at the time frame. You look at the culture. Then uh, I have a lot of questions surrounding the 14 year old. I have a lot of questions surrounding the the, the yearbook uh, Gloria Allred won the Beverly Young Nelson. Uh, but, but the rest of them, there was nothing can illegal. The, can that one you just discount now? You know, once we find out that uh, she made up this yearbook post, can we just do you just throw that one out? Or does she I, I have any other so. evidence? Well, uh, other than the yearbook, no. And, and one of the questions that really uh, stood out to me was when she said that she couldn't remember if he pushed her out of the car or if she got out of the car. She couldn't remember this. She couldn't remember that. But she could tell you that he was brown hush puppies in a dark car. Okay. All right. So, so your thought then is uh, Roy Moore. Roy Moore is going to take this. You you threw out a stat that seventy percent of Alabamians don't even believe the allegations whatsoever. So they're not even they're not even having these discussions. They're not listening to these stories at all. They that's they put that aside and they're going to vote along party lines. Well, they're they're seeing it as a hit job based on the timing, and you also have to think that Mitch McConnell funneled millions of dollars into the state of Alabama during the primaries. Look, I was a Mo Brooks girl. I wanted to see Mo get. Uh, the seat, it, it didn't work out that way. I'm not a huge fan of Luther either, but Mitch McConnell wanted Luther strange. They sent Mike Pence. They sent Donald Trump. They pulled out all the stops, spent millions of dollars. And, uh, here we have Roy Moore and had Mitch McConnell had this information. If this was really out there for years, if this was out for everybody knew it, it was an open secret, uh, as they are suggesting Mitch McConnell would have used it. Yeah, because that's what's interesting about oh. this whole thing is the fact that Trump wasn't a Roy Moore guy originally. He got behind Luther Strange, who was the appointment uh, made by the governor. And so for then Trump to kind of come the, the around. The now disgraced governor. 
That's right. Yeah, and and then for Trump to now come around and get behind Roy Moore is a pretty big deal in itself. Uh, and, and so I guess my question is, what? Well, two things. Do you think he'll actually get the opportunity to serve? Uh, because there is going to be more than likely an investigation, and there's going to be hearings, you know, before he's uh, seated in the Senate, I believe. Uh, and then two. What do you think that does to the Republican Party in Alabama if they find themselves now in a position where the senator that they elected is not being seated and they may potentially have another special election to deal with? Well, one, these special elections, uh, according to Secretary of State Merrill, cost us $16.5 million uh, per special election for a state that says they have no money. That's true. Uh, the best case scenario would be Roy Moore says, vote for me today. I will immediately step down and let Governor Ivey appoint somebody else. That's never going to happen. Uh, it, does there need to be a special elect or I mean, a, uh, an ethics investigation? I have no problem with having an ethics investigation uh, if he if he is elected today and he goes to Washington because they threw out Al Franken uh, last week as the sacrificial lamb of the Democratic party so that they could essentially say see look we cleaned our house now we can go after roy moore and you saw it yesterday i heard y'all talking about it earlier we can go after donald trump right all right and that's uh that's that's the the top guy on the poll that they want to get the totem pole that they want to get uh but like i always say you know my my good liberal friends who i love i i go be careful what you ask for because donald trump as president may be annoying the crap out of you making you very scared right now uh but he's not getting a lot done if Pence gets in there, he will, all those things that you're scared about, he will work with the Republicans and get done. So, you know, be careful what you ask for if you want to get Trump out of office. I, I agree. I agree. But I think they're trying to clear the path to go after him. But ultimately, I think Roy Moore is going to pull it out today. Rachel Hammers, thank you so much. Conservative talk show host out of Alabama. Thank you for joining us once again. And how can uh, people track you down? Uh, the Rachel Hammer show, or you can go to WTKI, WEKI radio, click the listen live button between four and six, Monday through Friday. All right. Thank you, Rachel. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. That's awesome. Thank you for that, man. She's fantastic. Good man. I mean, she's, you know, and what's amazing is, is that, um, I'd say what, maybe about a year and a half ago, two years ago, she was just uh, a mom, stay at home mom. Yeah. No radio experience. She had done radio sales, and that's how Rachel and I got to know each other. She was a salesperson at the uh, radio station that I worked at in Huntsville, Alabama. Oh, wow. And uh, and we were kind of catching up and, and just uh, talking, and she goes, you know, I feel like I have a lot to say. I feel like I have a unique perspective. I think, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot to get off my chest, and, and, uh, and I said, you know, go for it, you know, start shaking the trees, start, you know, hitting up your old radio contacts and stuff. And sure enough, she tapped into a guy that used to work with us, uh, who went from being a news reporter on one of the stations to owning his own station. And he says, yeah, here, I'll go. I'll I'll give you a two hour time slot. Let's see what you got. That's awesome. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, Rachel hammers in uh, Alabama to track her down. Uh, so let's get to a, a positive story. Go ahead and put that little kid's face up on the uh, screen there. It's coming from TBO this morning <laughs> with the headline. This six-year-old kid made $11 million in one year reviewing toys on YouTube. Uh, this kind of stuff, man, just freaks the older generation out. Yep. Um, the, the older generation. And this is real money. This isn't, yeah. you know. This they, isn't speculative. These are checks that are coming to this kid from YouTube. You, you, the people that have kept their nose to the grind their entire lives, um, busting their ass in jobs that they hate, and hardly, you know, just scraping by for decade after decade after decade. All of a sudden, you wake up one day and you find out the people that have no training whatsoever in anything are making millions of dollars on the internet, uh, just doing the dumbest things. And you're sitting there going, what? Why did I waste all this time? Why do I, why do I even get an education? If all I got to do is do dumb shit on the internet and get paid for it. <laughs> well, uh, this kid. You mean like us? <laughs> well, exactly. Only like without us. The getting paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Minus that important part of the story. Apparently, we need to hire this kid as a consultant. I, yeah. When most people think back in child celebrities of their time, they likely think of child movie actors. You know, you got Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, Macaulay uh, Culkin. Uh, for others, there's Judy Garland or Shirley Temple, Temple, depending on your age. For kids these days, the biggest stars. 
are on YouTube. And one of the biggest is six-year-old Ryan, who plays with toys, mesmerizing millions of children across the globe. Since he was three years old, Ryan's parents have been capturing videos of him opening toys, playing with them, and reviewing them for uh, videos. The YouTube channel is Ryan Toys Review. Ryan's last name and his place of residence are closely guarded secrets and not without reason. He's become a multimillionaire. According to Forbes, he was ranked number eight on uh, uh, paid YouTube entrepreneurs, having brought in 11 million dollars jesus but in revenue in one year yeah that's insane yeah that just blows me away i'm gonna bring this back in uh, front of me here well look and we we definitely need to uh, jump on the kurt schreiner bandwagon on that idea because i again just the fact that it's santa opening toys i think would would be amazing to watch well, he was telling me that, he, you know, because when, he, you know, one of the things that sparked an idea for him is watching these people. And he said, there's this woman when he first was describing this to me a year ago or something more. Uh, he was talking about this woman, the same kind of thing. I don't know, 11 million views, 10 million, you know, millions of views. Yep. And all she does is open pa- packages. I'm like, because in my mind, I'm thinking right. there's something sexual here because yeah. I go, do, is she, like, is it, does she have a big bosom? Is there a lot of cleavage there where you get to see that in the <laughs> shot? He's like, no, he goes, it doesn't even, you never even see her face. It, it's just her hands. I'm like, oh, hand fetish people. Okay. I get it now. Uh, but I guess it's, oh, no, it's I'm, not even that. I'm sure there's the, some of those, but well, yeah, yeah. But the unboxing thing is a very real phenomenon and, and for various reasons. And so I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not, but you're you not know, three. But no, but even still, you see this big, even among people who are very into gadgets and electronics, you see these unboxing videos where people order the latest drone or GoPro or whatever new gadget is out. Um, uh, an uh, iPhone, okay, all right. you know, well, that's what well, you're, you're not watching. And, and, and you're literally just sitting there watching this person open the box as soon as they get it. And that's because you're interested in the product and you want to see, see, you know, it's brand new and you don't have one. You haven't seen one yet. So you're just going to go find one, right? That's all that is. But, but that's the thing. Like I have no, I, I don't get that. I don't get that. Like what's, what, what is the enjoyment? What is the entertainment value in watching somebody open a box even if it's, let's say, an Apple Watch, right? Like, I would love an Apple Watch, right? Like, I'm not going to sit there and watch a video of somebody open their Apple Watch. I'm with you. I would not. It is envy to its, almost to its most pathetic degree. But people will sit their kids down in front of these channels yes. as babysitters. Instead of, you know, flipping on, you know, whatever the cartoons are on Nickelodeon at the time, they just put them in front of a YouTube channel and they'll watch these. And I wonder if it plays in the same part of our brain that Peekaboo does. Yeah. Yeah. At- <laughs> I'm going to make that into a gif. <laughs> and so it's the, we'll call it the peekaboo factor. Yeah. Peekaboo syndrome. Uh, the reason, but yeah, 11 million, geez, children everywhere become hooked watching his videos for hours a day, even mimicking him and starting their own YouTube channels. For some of his youngest fans, Ryan is not just some stranger on the internet. He's their friend. Combine the world's 10 highest paid YouTube stars earn $127 million. <sighs> Cord's uh, chiming in in the comments section. He says, uh, well, one reason that people will watch these videos is because you want to see what it comes with, which is a good point. You know, what it includes, what it doesn't include. Um, but, but, yeah, but, the but watching I can go a to a product after, description and find that out. And, and watching video after video after video after video, it's, that plays, that's something different. Yeah. And then also, uh, you know, saying things like, what size is it? Right? Like, does it have all the cables? Like, I get all that. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I it just... Not my thing, I guess. And that number, by the way, is up 80%. Where I just told you the world's 10 highest paid. So, I mean, you're, you're looking at a graph that's going like this as far as how, how they're making, you know, the money to be made on YouTube, yeah. on the Internet. Well, because more and more companies are investing in online advertising, YouTube advertising. Uh, and so the price to do that at type of advertising is slowly increasing. And right. so, um, look... I think we need to get Shriner in here ASAP and and get on that wagon. He disappeared. I lost him. Where did I put you? Who? Why? Well, uh, oh, oh, the kid. Yeah. How did I? How did I? How did I do that? Um, so he, he, court says it always also lowers the risk to buy. And, and I get that sometimes, especially if it's maybe a brand you're not familiar with or a product you're not familiar with, uh, you may look at it and realize, oh, this thing's a piece of junk. 
you know, and and you're like, man, I'm sure glad I didn't buy that. And then uh, you may also realize, hey, wow, that's that's they put a lot of time and effort into that, which is again a, a testament to what Steve Steve Jobs' brilliance, which was the packaging of so many of the Apple products that seemed excessive, uh, you know, in this era, uh, completely makes sense. Here we go. Six year old, 11 million. I'm sorry. Sorry that I, I lost my, um, my little tab there. There we go. Let's go ahead and press play on one of his videos and see what, uh, what all the fuss is about. Don't settle for less than the best. Get Spectrum Whoa. Business for faster internet. Welcome to Ryan Toy Review. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas. Whoa, what's that with your light of nose? <laughs> That's funny. Adorable kid. Hey, Rudolph. Today we're going to open day one through ten. That's right. And what do we have here? Angry Bird. Disney Tsum Tsums. Oh, two of them. And yeah, what's even crazier is these companies are sending him this stuff. Right. That's right. I hope At we don't get point. the same one, right? <laughs> these are what it looks like in the bag. I hope these are different toys. Whoa, a train. Oh, this one comes with a train. This is not compelling at all. And this, <laughs> this is not captivating to me at all. It's a holiday and, special. And, and if I'm a parent, cool. make it, like I allowing my kid to, like I feel like I'm dangling the carrot in front of the bunny rabbit, right? Like I feel like I'm teasing them. Like you're turning them with, into little uh, uh, what are they, uh, superficial consumers? Like, no, like you're you're teasing them. You're dangling this thing. Like again, most of this stuff I would probably never buy my kid and they would sit there and watch this kid opening all this stuff that they're never going to get. Not because I don't want to buy it for them, but probably because I couldn't afford to buy it for them or because you're not going to buy them this much crap. You know, and so to sit there and watch this kid open this stuff, like I, as long as they understand it's for entertainment. Put him back up on the screen. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Forgot what camera was on. Something to launch. It's like an advent calendar kind of thing. I bet this one's already. Angry Birds advent calendar. Yay! Eleven million dollars he made in the last year. Oh, that's amazing. Angry Birds advent calendar. Yay! Eleven million dollars he made in the last year. Oh, that's cool. It's Red Bird. Wow. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> what? What is that? I don't know. For those of you poor cool. schleps, been this busting your ass all your life. To make the house. Oh, they're towers. Oh, this kid has okay, already okay. made more money than most people it? ever. See if you can knock them right. down. I think that's what you're supposed to do. All right, now that the kid's made eleven million dollars, take him off the internet, put that towards a college fund, and let him be a normal kid. Yeah. Or is this is this the new normal? The future. I mean, if you're if, if you're this kid's parents, I mean, again, it, it, it I'm sure you've got to be torn with the decision of whether and like how long do you let this kid do this? Do you let this be this kid's vehicle, you know, until the the, the cash runs dry? I mean, until the the viewership dries up, or um, or do you again, like you said, you unplug and you let him be a normal kid? I don't think they're forcing him to do this. The kid obviously is no. getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. I mean, at uh, three years old, they started this at three years old. It wasn't like, you know. Is it Anna Elsa? Who is it? It's, it's the reindeer. Oh. When, do you remember going to other people's uh, birthday par parties when you were a kid? Yeah. <laughs> Did you... How much fun was it to sit and watch somebody else open up all their presents? That sucked. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't watch these videos. Like, yeah, okay, I want a drone, but I don't want to sit there and watch Cord Zoe and play with his. Right. I just want to get that little dig in there because I know he's watching. Oh, it went over mommy's head. All right, well, good for mommy and daddy. And that's the thing. These parents, I, I, I don't believe at this point, are paying for those toys any longer. No, you're right. At this point, toy companies are sending this kid toys because they know it's going to get them millions of views and it's going to get them in front of millions of kids and parents who may be looking to buy Christmas presents. On the uh, social media front, um, the Facebook's former vice president um, for for user growth, Shamath Palahabatabada, recently gave a talk. And I, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm, I'm not... Uh, I messed that name up. I, <laughs> it's not my forte. Uh, 
Recently gave a talk at the uh, Stanford Graduate School of Business that'll probably make you think twice about your social media use. The entire talk is a is well worth a watch, but some of the most important prominent remarks include that he feels tremendous guilt about Facebook. This is the former vice president of Facebook. Feels tremendous guilt. Quote, I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fra- fabric of how society works. Quote, the short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops we've created, including hearts, likes, and thumbs up on various social media channels, are destroying how society works. He added, there's no civil discourse, no cooperation, only misinformation and mistruth. And it's not an American problem. This is, about, uh, this is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. But this is the thing. They know They know the tricks. They're using our psychology against us. Because yep. when he's talking about the dopamine-driven dri- uh, feedback loops, that's what all, all those little actions aren't there because, oh, it, you know, people want to like this yeah. or they want to do that. Or they, no, it, we know that if we can get you to engage, click, 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 that you, we're drawing you more and more and more in. Um, it's like, it's like, uh, um, uh, a, a salesman, you know, eight, you know, a security alarm system salesman showing up to your doorstep versus making a phone call. Right. They know if they can get FaceTime with you, that they've got, that increases their chances. If they get their foot in the door, if you invite them in that, inc- they, Oh, well, there you go. I, that's increased my chances in another percentage yeah. and another percentage right. to, to, well, and it's not just social media. I mean, it's our phones in general. I mean, look, uh, while, Last night, you know, uh, you and Quartz were texting back and forth about some of the enhancements we made here to the studio, and and in the in the middle of that, I'm like with my daughter, and I'm trying to give her a bath and put her to bed and all this stuff. Meanwhile, the phone is buzzing in my pocket, and I'm like, "You're getting anxiety." Uh, you- yeah, I'm getting anxiety because it's frustrating and and equally. Uh, I'm wanting to know, okay, what the hell's going on and why is my phone going crazy? Uh, and at the same time, I'm trying to be respectful to my daughter and not take out my phone while I'm spending time with her and getting her ready for bed. He goes on to say, regarding an incident in which seven innocent men in India were lynched after a hoax about kidnapping spread through the WhatsApp, WhatsApp quote, that's what we're dealing with. And imagine taking that to the extreme where bad actors can now manipulate large swaths of people to do anything you want. It's just really, really a bad state of affairs. And uh, unsurprisingly, when it comes to social media, his children, quote, aren't allowed to use that shit. Uh, (laughs) I I love this story. Uh, it, It needs to be out there. But this is something that Shriner and I would talk about a lot. On uh, on that uh, AM show that I was doing with him, because he would come in like every once a week and say that the internet is what's wrong with everything. The internet, you shut it down, get rid of, do something. The internet is. I what's, don't agree with that. Right, yeah. but then he would come in a couple of days later and talk about something great about the internet too. Yeah, and they're both true. It's just it's always easier to focus on the negative. Because right. um, the, the negative is scary. Sure, but that being said, I mean, I don't think, I think for many families like my own, I think we've never been closer. We've never communicated more than we have now. And and it's allowed you to maintain relationships with people that, again, previously you would have lost touch with. I I liken it to Oppenheimer's toy um, or, or the or or the discovery of the splitting of the atom, right? And how that releases energy. Well, you can look at that at two different ways. We've discovered something that can power humanity, power the entire planet, or you discovered something that can destroy the entire planet. Yeah. It's both. And the same thing with the internet. It's the uh, the good comes with the well, well if it's if it's got that much bad, I don't care how much good. No, no, that's not the way it works. And is a social media ripping apart society? No. It's affecting our the our societal evol- the evolution of our society. Uh, of culture, yeah. of humanity. It is effect, definitely affecting that. And whatever course you thought we were on 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that course has shifted. That is, it's been diverted. Um, ripping apart society? No. Because on the other side of that, it's bringing together society. Yeah. It's bringing together people that 
Um, you know, I, I think about those people out in the middle of nowhere that, you know, if you're in, if you're in a big city, if you're in a, a metropolitan area, you've got a lot of different people that you can associate with. If you're out in the middle of nowhere, you have a handful. You got the small town that you live in, you just, you know, friends and family that have known each other for generations. And if you are not just like them, then you're ostracized. Um, you're beaten, you know, or worse. But now with the age of the internet, you get on Facebook, you go, wait, there's other people like me. There's other weird people like me out there in the world. And you get to connect with somebody and realize that you're not that different. And that not only are there, is it or another person like you out there, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in the world that are out there like you. And so you get to, I think that helps out. But again, at the same time, uh, that lonely person out in the middle of, and you don't have to be in the middle of nowhere to be alone. You can be right in the middle of a city, right in the middle of the biggest city in the world and still be trapped in your own head. Has it allowed them to connect with the wrong types of people in the world? Just like this guy that uh, tried to set off a bomb or half set off a bomb yesterday in uh, New York City. Yes, there's the downside uh, uh, to it too. Up and it's gonna it, it's changing everything. It's going to change everything. But I don't think you sit back and go, it's ripping society apart. Let's figure out a way to get rid of it or whatever. Which you can't do. You can't put that genie back in the bottle. Now, Chris uh, chimes in. He goes, if you, I think if you teach your kids to not really give a shit about what people think uh, about their image, they won't grow up worrying about when or what to post all the time. Uh, I mean, that's easier said than done, but I think that that's a valid point. I mean, I think a lot of this is for uh, approval from others. You know, it's that peer pressure. Uh, there's also the the FOMO, you know, the effect, you know, fear of missing out. Uh, and then he also says that, uh, that really social media is making everyone codependent of the approval from their Facebook world. Um, and then keeping your kid off the Internet uh, writes Elliot is also a fast track to making him a social pariah. You just got to keep it within reason. And like I say all the time, everything in moderation. I know for those people who are like, my kids aren't going to have an iPad at three years old and da, 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 da. Good for you. That's a good, good, but you're not going to win that fight for very long. Yeah. Cause by the time, you know, is uh, Elliot's right. Um, you want to raise your kid in the way that you were raised, but you're good. They're going to be behind the eight ball. You, you want your kid immersed in technology, yep. but, but it's scary. Create, and you got to create those boundaries. Yeah. And I mean, look, again, my two-year-old daughter has an iPad. I gave her my iPad because I wasn't using it. And I realized- You're a horrible parent. I, I, uh, evidently. <laughs> and, and I saw the educational value in it. She only has educational apps on it. And then I also use it to FaceTime with her. Um, but I realized that for her future, the future that she is going to live in, uh, I'm putting her at an advantage to being familiar and accustomed to that type of technology. Um, and then it's it's creating boundaries. We don't take the iPad out of the house. I don't have yet. A, I don't have TV screens in my car. Yeah, maybe yet. Right. Because you're, you're trying being, to have dinner with your, you know, your future wife, whoever yeah. she may be, whenever she comes into your life. Right. Um, and uh, you, you're trying to keep that kid pacified. You're like, you just can't take it anymore. You're trying to be old school, and you're like, screw it. Here's my phone. Here's the password. Um, now shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to enjoy my dinner. Yeah, and uh, but but it's also that sort of thing. Like I also uh, make this uh, comparison, like with alcohol. If you're somebody who was prohibited from having any type of alcohol for your entire life until you turned uh, 21, you're more likely to overindulge binge. in alcohol, right? To be involved in binge drinking. That was never the case in my family. Like they would give us little sips and little tastes and that sort of thing growing up. So I didn't have this fascination with alcohol because it was never were prohibited from me same right. thing with technology she's gonna know that from the time she was two you know from the time she could barely remember if remember at all she's had technology in her life and she's not going to be obsessed with it because it's always been just part of her natural surroundings well, well thank you so much for being a part of the wake dot show today uh like and share like and share we really appreciate it don't forget to go to the website uh, the website is thewake.show and register win tickets to the Gasparilla Music Festival that we'll be giving away. Once again, that's thewake.show. There's no com in there. There's no .com. It's just www.thewake.show. Have a great day. Love you. Come out and see me tonight at uh, Boulevard Burgers. We'll uh, play some trivia starting at 7 o'clock.